Hi, it's Cheryl back with you from Farmhouse Frugally. So today I am going to do some spring flips. If you are new to my channel, I love to do some crafts and furniture flipping. We have a phenomenal dump in our town where we could take or leave a number of items. And therefore I do t dump hauls and then some wonderful trash to treasures. So today, trash to treasure number one, I am taking this little birdhouse that my husband brought home from the good table at the dump the other day, and it had this cute little black bird, and it was in a hunter green color, and it had a bunch of little Spanish moss in it, but it was a little worse for wear, so I want to pull some of that out, clean it off, and then give that a different color paint. And I have been using this muslin wrap wall paint color, a latex paint that I use in my living room and um, just had a little bit left of that. So I thought I would go ahead and give that a couple of coats of that color. A little bit tricky getting it around this Spanish moss area, but basically I just wanted to make sure that I gave it a good coat, mostly just to cover the green underneath, uh, not to get a perfect paint job because I am going to go ahead and cover over the birdhouse anyway. But also it helps if you are going to decoupage or use some of the stamps or the transfers. Oftentimes it helps to have a neutral color, uh, white or cream or something underneath um, your work surface, depending on the transfer, the stamp, or the decoupage you're using. In this case, I am going to decoupage, so I just wanted to have a nice, solid, light-colored background to use for that. I'm a little bit designing as I go here, with this piece, I did not have a complete idea yet. <laughs> so I started by thinking that that roof just was a little bit um, sad. And I just wanted to get that a little bit more, um, just a refresh, I guess. So I pulled out my black chalk paint and I just went ahead and touched up the black that was on there and um, just gave that a good second, you know, just a quick refresh coat uh, on the sides, on the top, and underneath that roof just to get that going. And then the bird was black, and this is when I decided to paint the bird in blue. This is a nautical blue chalk paint, and I wanted to freshen the bird up, paint, left the little orangey yellow beak, and then painted what was black in this pretty uh, dark nautical blue color. And just fresh that up, make it a little less primitive country, um, a little more refreshed. You can find a lot of these primitive country pieces at uh, thrift stores or Goodwill, or in this case at the dump. And oftentimes they, are, they have really good bones and a lot of times very good detail but maybe just need a new fresh coat. And then after that had dried, I decided that I wanted to go ahead and paint over that black roof with the same nautical blue that I had painted the bird. Um, because as I'm going along here, this is when I'm deciding that I am going to decoupage this piece. And the decoupage paper that I have in mind has some blues in it. Um, and I think that'll go much nicer if I keep the, if I uh, change the roof color. Now I get these decoupage napkins a number of places, but I had happened to go on to Etsy some months back and I bought a pack of uh, several different kinds and I had not used this blue one. If you decoupage with a napkin, you want to make sure you remove the second or third ply, only keeping the top ply because when you decoupage, obviously, you want to have that be nice and thin and use only the piece that you need. So I just poked a hole right where the little bird perch was, 
took a paintbrush and that decoupage and just give that a nice thin coat underneath to get something to glue that to, especially keeping it here in the peak so that it is good and covered. And then just little by little, smooth that out. You can keep the wrinkles or you can smooth the wrinkles out. It's completely up to you. I don't mind a little bit of wrinkle. I think it looks a, a little bit older that way, especially if you'd like to put a wax over it of some sort, then the, um, the wrinkles kind of pick up the, the wax as you go. But this, in, you know, this case, I just wanted to make sure that I got it down. Now I had not quite enough of the napkin on the bottom, so I go down as far as I can with that, wrap it on the sides, take my scissors and my exacto knife to get the excess napkin off of the peak of the roof and uh, completely cover that if you really do not like to have wrinkles it may be best to wait an hour for that to dry completely before you go ahead and mod podge over the top of it you don't always have to mod podge over the top it depends on the application if it's decorative you may not need to do that at all if it's something that you think may get wet or you want to make certain last for a long time then you can completely cover the entire surface of the top with the mod podge keeping in mind that even though it says it is a matte finish it really does have a bit of a shine so here's where I took a tiny strip of the napkin piece that was left over just to complete that bottom. I could have painted it with the blue or what have you, but since I had a little bit of napkin left, I decided that I would like to complete it all the way down. And then I went ahead and completely covered the entire birdhouse with the Mod Podge. Um, one, I wanted to preserve it to keep it, but also I knew that I was going to have to cut out um, the places where that Spanish moss had been once that uh, the napkin had been good and dry to the hole. Now here I am just adding an eye with just the bottom of my paintbrush and a, just a touch of white paint just to get that finished. Cutting out with an X-Acto knife. I'm a little bit out of frame here, but just cutting those holes back out again where that Spanish moss had been. I like the Spanish moss and I want to go ahead and add some back in, um, but there wasn't quite enough to begin with. So Mod Podge again some of that napkin down into the hole so that it will stay. And then with my hot glue gun, I am just going to go ahead and add the Spanish moss and put the bird back on. And that is all there is to it to change this from a primitive country piece to an updated floral piece. So I thought it looked really cute in my kitchen with what I already had going on. You'll have to let me know what you think about that. And then on projects number two and three, I have a pair that I received at the dump. I think I showed you in my most recent dump haul these beautiful chairs. And I absolutely love the design of these. They are just so pretty. Um, they were missing the fabric, but I they did come with the piece of wood and the um, some of the foam, but it was in, um, you know, separated from the chair. And so I did want to go ahead and give it a little bit of a sand. I didn't really want to paint this wood because it is just really so pretty, but it did have a fair amount of scratches and dings. It's probably, boy, at least 1950, if not older. So, um, it, it had a lot of wear to it. So I took the fine grit sandpaper and just sanded over all of the edges to make that stick out a little bit because I thought maybe I would add a little bit of wax to pull that together. 
but keep it wood instead of adding paint to it. Because I know a lot of people paint over wood, and I'm fine painting over wood if it's not a good quality wood or you know, certainly over pine or something like that. But when it's a nice antique piece, I prefer not to paint it. So here is the bottom of the chair, and it was in very good shape. It just was separated, and I wanted to add a little bit more bulk, so I had a third chair I pad, so I separated it in half, added another uh, muslin piece, and then a beautiful hydrangea piece of fabric that I would say is almost like a tapestry feel, cottage core um, style, something maybe a little bit grand millennial or, or even um, shabby chic. It's not something I normally decorate my home with. I like it. I very much appreciate this uh, style. I like this piece of fabric. I've had it for a long time. I just haven't had the right project to put it on. It was actually given to me from a friend and it just has those beautiful pinks and blues and creams and sages in it. And so I thought that, that this chair really lent itself to that style. And so I went ahead and did the same thing for the other chair. I had waxed that uh, wood, which I, I must not have, have filmed, but I think that they came out really nice and just refreshed from what they were, certainly having found them at the dump without any fabric whatsoever. They are much, much prettier than they had been. So... I would love to sell these. Hopefully I will be able to. And that takes me on to project four and five. This was my inspiration. I saw this fresh berry sign for sale on, I believe, Instagram. And I went into my stash and I had found that I had just a plain frame that I had gotten at the dump once upon a time. And somebody had begun to write a word on it with lead pencil. So I just wanted to go ahead and get that sanded smooth as well as getting that word. Make sure that I took the glass and the cardboard backing out of that so that I could give that glass a good cleaning. And um, I printed just on a piece of regular office paper a little free graphic that I thought was cute with the little strawberries. Cut that to fit, clean to the glass, and then just put that right back in there as a simple design. And um, that was step one of my two-step process here. And that was very simple. And the second part of this was this beautiful basket I also picked up at the dump. Um, and I, that was a couple months back. And so I wanted to keep it natural. I just put a couple of the grocery store bags for some height and some of that pretty moss from the dollar store, the green moss. And then I had picked up these strawberries at Michael's clearance after last summer. So I think I paid $3 for the bucket of them. And uh, they are really, really cute. You can see as I'm putting them there that I like them, but they don't have any seeds. So they don't look quite as real as I'd like. So I started with a toothbrush, got some black paint out, and then just kind of flicked some of that paint on there. But that is not the look that I'm going for. So I decided that I would take a little more time, <laughs> grab some toothpicks, and then just dipping the end of the toothpick in to the black paint, just kind of dabbing a little seed on to the um, strawberry base there. Now you can kind of just pull it down just a tiny little bit, dot it on, pull it down, dot it on, pull it down. And it took a few minutes for me to get, you know, 10 or 12 of these completely seeded, but I think that they look so much more real. And I still have half a bucket left for another project. And then I just filled that little natural colored basket and then decided I wanted to do a little more to the basket. So I had this piece of Capri white jeans. 
I had saved that fabric when I, I had worn those capris for quite some time. I loved them, but I wanted to just keep that fabric. So I cut myself a rectangle piece of fabric and then just taped that onto my Lazy Susan. Pulled out some red paint. And I wanted to add a little bit of the green sack um, stripes onto this. And so if you've probably seen this done before, but I like to have one fatter stripe and then two thin stripes, one on either side of that. But you can do it a number of different ways, whatever pattern that you like. And I like to use a small stencil brush when I do this. Just take some on the brush, wipe it a little bit off, and then just go ahead and kind of pounce and rub that. Depends on the fabric that you're using. Fabric's pretty forgiving, I think, forgiving for this. Um, if you're using paper, you might want to go with a little bit less paint. It's easier to add more. Um, and then I just wanted that to be a fairly dark red to kind of match those strawberries. And then peel that off and added the other tape over that to get a thin stripe on either side until I had what resembled that green sack. And I thought it would be cute to, I was thinking about putting a word or putting something in the center, but here you can see taking the tape off and, um, I thought that came out really, really cute. Such a sweet country feel. Um, green sack and then um, just cut the strings off and added the little detail and then you can use glue or you can use tacks you can use um, I like the little um, what are they upholstery tacks um, to put fabric onto things, depending on, on what I'm making. In this particular case, I believe I just used some hot glue. Um, but here is the marker, and I just went ahead and just freehand five cents on that, and then I run over that a couple of times. Now, I like that little primitive lettering with the little dots so I took the end of the paintbrush, since I had the paint, the black paint right out anyway, um, and just went ahead and added those onto that, just to give that a little finished look there. And then added that with hot glue to the basket, and that is all there was to this. So my take on that sweet little berry sign for the summer and I thought that those came out really cute easy to reproduce so you'll have to let me know if you would like to try something like that and I appreciate your stopping by I will see you in the next one take care